Uh, welcome back. So if you're if you haven't watched the chi squared test video, I suggest you watch that first so you understand what um, what we're doing with this test and we're looking at the survival of men and women on the Titanic. It's a nice easy data set to, set to get started with because we already know what the results are so it makes interpreting it a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do is show you how to run a really simple logistic regression and then we're going to go through what the various bits of the output mean and we're really taking a really a, a simple look at it. I'm showing you the essentials that you need to understand it um, and I'm going to try and pair back a lot of the output. So although I'm saying simple, it's mean the simplest version we can look at of logistic regression. It still can be quite confusing, um, if, especially if you're not comfortable with that way that SPSS presents stuff and understanding what's going in your head with, on in your, in your head with all the codes. So if we go to the analyze and regression, uh, you might have used linear regression before and now we want to use binary logistic regression. And this is because our outcome is not continuous it's binary. Either you survived or you did not. Um, so to understand how this works mathematically, I encourage you to watch the lecture um, or search a resource online. So mostly just to keep this far, um, it's not going to be fast, but faster than it would be otherwise if I was explaining the math at the same time. So the dependent variable is survival. And we're going to run the simplest model with just um, gender first and then we will look at adding in other variables so you can make a quite a complex model uh, using logistic regression so I'm going to add in sex uh, actually I'm going to take out that survived and we're going to put in <laughs> no we'll do it with survived and I'll show then I'll show you why I've recoded it and this is one of the complications which n legitimately drives people a little bit nuts so one of the most important things that we need to look at is to work out how internally SPSS is coding this outcome variable of survival. Now it has said it's decided here that it's going to code the yes as zero and the no as one. Now this is not going to be helpful to us because we were looking to, we want to report the odds of survival for a woman to show how much higher it is than for a man. And often we do it this way because odds which are greater than one or odds ratios which are greater than one can be more intuitive to, um, to understand than odds ratios which are smaller than one. And that's because on the lower end, the, all the small odds ratios get crammed up between zero and one. They don't go negative. Whereas above one, they can go as big as you like. So it can be a little bit easier to understand if you recode your variable so that all your odds ratios are greater than one. And we were looking at survival as the outcome. So all of that is a very complicated way of saying it's got our outcome the wrong way around. We don't want it to, to look at the no's. We want it to be looking at the yeses. Yes, survived. Now, there may be a way that you can force SPSS to do it. And it could be that I'm being very daft and I haven't worked that out yet. But the only way that I know how to do it is to actually recode the variable. So here where I had ones and twos, what I've actually done is recoded it back into the original um, ones and zeros or zeros and ones which is how it was in the original data set but I had to recode it for the chi-squared test. Um, so in the analyze now if you sorry I'm just having a mental blank looking for logistic regression again binary logistic if we put in the recoded values and press OK we'll now see that the dependent variable encoding here has got the yes as a one and this is what we want. So the next thing we need to check is the um, the independent variable. How is it coding that? And here we can see it's got female as a one. So it means that when we look at the odds ratios, we're getting the odds of survival. Yes, for a female and that's how we will interpret it. So these two boxes are super important. What I might do is just delete some of these others. And I have this nagging feeling that some of this output is formatted a little bit differently um, in the previous version. 
So you'll be looking for block one. Um, we're not going to go through all the details. Let's go through the variables in the equation. And you, hopefully you've picked out, oh, there's that 11.3 that we were looking at, the odds ratio of survival for women compared to men. So we've got the same answer using logistic regression that we got with chi-squared test. It can just be a little bit more complicated to set up. The significance here um, is your p-value. And this exponential beta, so if you're looking into the maths, you'll be able to see why, we, um, why it's exponential beta and not just beta for logistic regression. This is your odds ratio. So I'm just going to highlight that and change that to odds ratio. And we're not concerned about the constant in this case. We're really just looking at the effect of gender. Now, something that we often want to report with the odds ratio is the confidence interval for the odds ratio. And there's a box you can tick for that. Uh, regression, binary logistic options, CI for XB, that's what we want. Confidence interval for exponential beta. Scroll right down and here you'll see we've got our the same confidence interval that we had before with the chi-squared test. So this may have seemed a lot more complicated to do than a chi-squared test, um, and that's a fair comment. However, you have a little bit more flexibility with the logistic regression in that you can now add more variables in. So if we wanted to look at the effect of gender on survival after controlling for class, we can't do that with a chi-squared test, but we can adjust for it in logistic regression. So let's have a look at adding that in, and it's quite simple binary logistic, you just keep adding variables into this box basically. So let's add in passenger class and press OK. And we can see that the effect of class, why do we only have one there, is significant. Let me just have a look how it's coded class. Oh, you know what? I'll tell you why it hasn't come out with, um, I would be expecting to see two values here because we had three passenger classes and we can compare two at a time. So I would be expecting to see first class compared with third class, say, and second class compared with third class or the other way around. And I've just got one val value here. So what I think is it's interpreted class as a continuous variable and not a categorical variable. So if we go back into the, um, the box here, and I should have seen this. Again, it's a Friday. I haven't had enough coffee. Um, is we've got cat next to sex, meaning that it's a categorical variable, but it's not showing up next to passenger class. Um, so what we do is we click on this categorical box and we say, you know what, that's categorical too. And we may come back to this in a second to have a look at the reference category. So now that we've got that in there, let's go OK. Um, all this output, goodness me. Yes, OK. These are our variable encodings. So first is getting this one in brackets. And this is going to help us interpret the output. Second is getting the two in brackets. Now that's great because that's going to be really easy. Um, it means we're comparing both the first class with the third class and the second class with the third class. So we'll be looking at the increase in your odds of survival compared with the third class people. So that's a, a, a nice natural coding and I'll show you at the end how you can sort of flip this around and manipulate it if it hasn't come out in a nice order. I'm going to go through and delete some of this output so it's not quite so cluttered. And what we want is just again the very last box so that we can understand or so that we can get our odds ratios out. Now you'll notice that the one, it's all significant and we knew that we'd already seen previously and we might do the graph again at the end that there was a huge difference of survival, which class and which gender you were. Now 
anytime you add a variable into a model, the, the significance values can change and all the parameter estimates can change, which then means the odds ratios can change. So it's just trying to, it's going, oh, all right, we're considering class now. Let's just shuffle everything around a bit and see how this pans out. And it's actually made the effect of gender even stronger after controlling for class. So it's saying that after we've adjusted for class, the odds of surviving for a woman compared, the odds ratio of survival for women compared to men is, is 12 to 1. So for every uh, one man who survived, there were over 12 women who survived. So that's massive. But we've also got this effect of class, not quite as big as gender, but still. And if you remember from here, this one in brackets means first and it's being compared with third because that's got both zeros. So uh, here, I, it's probably helpful if you put in a label and then the two, and I'm just looking for where it's got a one in the column is second class. And we're comparing both of those with the third class. So because odds ratios are always a comparison, uh, I'm just going to change that gender to being female. There's always one um, category that's not reported. So with the female, we just with gender, we just see the female, but we don't get a value for male. And that's because this value represents females compared to males. With class, because we've got the three categories, it actually puts a blank row in for the reference category and it gives us the odds ratios of these two compared with third. We can't actually see the increase in the odds of being first class compared with second class. So we could work that out manually if that was really important. But what we've got here is the increase in odds of survival of first class compared with third class. Now this is, this is really tricky the first time you do it. So if you were doing this for your projects, I encourage you to, to do it early, bring it to a workshop and um, we can, I can help you work through this output and check that you're getting your parameter codings the right way and help you relabel this table so that you can interpret these odds ratios. So you might be asking at this point, how do I manipulate all these things if stuff is coming out in the wrong order? So as I said, with this one here, the dependent variable, I would actually recode that into a fresh column for the outcome that you want. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to go to transform, recode into a different variable. I'll reset this. So I could put in survived and you could call this, let's call this survival three because I've already recoded it a couple of times. You can put in a label and stuff there. And then we tell it the old and new values. So if originally it was, so we originally I had one for yes and two for no, and I wanted the no to come first. So I would change the two into a zero. So it appeared first. Um, and I'd actually keep one the same. I don't know if you need to put that in or if it'll keep them the same anyway, but I'm just going to put it in to be sure. So that's your old and new values continue okay and then if you flip to your data you should see a new column with your codings set up there so that's what I would do for the dependent variable and someone can post a comment or write and tell me if there's an easier way to do that for the cat um, the independent variables it's actually a little bit simpler there is an option here where you could flip the order of them so under regression binary logistic where we had the categorical variables and I said you could, um, we might come back to this. This contrast is referring to which way around it has coded these variables here. So it says that it's using um, it says that it's using la the reference, yeah it is, sorry, the reference category is the one we're comparing to and it's picking the last one. So male is last, and that's our reference category. We're comparing women to men. So if we wanted to do it the other way around and have men and get the odds of survival for men compared to women, we could um, click that and click change, and you'll see it will put the first up there, and it will flip them around. And the same with the passenger class. If we wanted to 
compare second and third class to first class, then uh, we could change that there. So now you'll see with this output, first class has got both the zeros and we're comparing second and third to it. And now female has got the zero and we're comparing male to it. Um, scroll right down to the output. Now the reason I wouldn't do it this way around is because now all your odds ratios are less than one and they're a little bit less easy to interpret. So I probably, if I was writing this up, I wouldn't report the results this way. Um, but if yours, is, if yours have come out sort of the wrong way around, then you can have a play with them to get them the other way around. So in terms of showing these results, if we were doing a, um, a t-test or ANOVA or a general linear model or regression, we might be doing some type of graph of means and confidence intervals. But usually, uh, and for logistic regression, you can, sorry, let me scroll up to the other output that was better. What we would be interested in plotting is these odds ratios with confidence intervals. Um, and we'll, there's an example in the uh, discussion material of how you can, of what this might look like in a paper. The other thing that you can do is to simply illustrate the results. It's just a stacked bar chart. And I think that's, depending on how many variables you're not in for a student project, I think that's quite nice and it can be quite compelling. Uh, in terms of graphing these values here, I don't know an automated way to do that for these odds ratios. I tend to bring it into Excel and do an error bar chart in Excel and I manually put in these numbers. I don't know if that's the smartest way to do it. Someone can correct me. Um, you, you could even draw it out extremely neatly on a bit of paper and just scan it if you wanted to, if you don't like using Excel for that sort of thing, but you wanted that graph. But if you were comparing odds ratios, I'd probably only do that if you had more than two independent variables. Like if you had, so is it, was it a diabetes study we looked at in class? If you had a, um, if you had a whole raft of variables you were complaining, uh, complaining, comparing, then you might want to try and graph these values here. Otherwise, you're probably okay with a stacked bar chart. So. Now, if we, I'm just trying to remember how to do this in SPSS. I might have to stop and make another video if I work it out because I think I've actually forgotten. I'm having a mental blank of how to get the third variable in here. Um, in Excel, when you do a pivot chart, it's actually quite easy to add more onto the categories. I wonder if we just add passenger class. No, it's switching it out. What if we add gender as a filter variable? Now, I know you don't have this filter box in no, it's not letting me. Um, interesting. So that's the results for passenger class. And we did the graph previously for gender. So what I might do is I might stop the video here. And then if I work out how to do it into SPSS, I'll do another quick video of having multiple variables. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing a 3D one. There'll be a way that you can probably manipulate it with these things, but I'll have to a rose panel variable. Let's just try it. Oh gosh, no, let's not do that. Um, but the one we did in Excel, the pivot chart back at the start of the course is quite nice for that.